I'm Ray Bobel, and this is the Beauville and Newtown Railroad, or Model Railroad. Well, good evening, track gang. Um, it happens to be Saturday, December the 4th of 2021 this happens to be vlog 40 for 2021 and this is a little something different why do i say that again well um had some things going on here um so considering that i was like well if i'm going to be where i'm at i might as well try and get something done down here so um i had talked about a project that I had wanted to do on the railroad uh, since its inception. Um, for lack of a better term, um, walk around throttle at DC. Um, I know there's manufacturers of them. Um, MRC actually made one a while back um, and a few others. However, they get a little pricey. I came up with an idea. And the idea was to use this. Now this is a Bachman throttle and it has AC in and track out. Um, this was going to be a great idea. This is nice and small. You can have, hold it in one hand. You can even move the, the knob with the thought. And you know, this was going to be wonderful. Yeah until I found out that it doesn't put out enough power to move an Atherin locomotive. <laughs> um, its max output is around 12 to 16 volts. Um, and it would appear as though, for instance, which is what I've been using for the moment, are these guys. Now, these are rail power, rail power 1370s, and these are 19 volt AC, 15 volt DC. That only says that it's 16 volts AC, which means that it's probably only pushing maybe 12 volts DC. It's not enough. Um, so, I was like, well, these here are a little large. Let's see if we've got something else. Well, believe it or not, but I did come up with something. This guy. Now, the only problem with this is, number one, it's all metal. And this is just as heavy as that 1370. Now, this is a uh, Aurora... Uh, postage stamp train power pack. I've actually got two of these sitting out here. These do put out enough voltage. The one thing I don't like though is the is the knob and it has a tendency to catch. It's not very smooth. So that kind of went out the window. So then I was like, well, you know what? I've got a couple of these dudes and these actually put out 17 volts DC. Now, the only issue with these, these are nice and small, but the problem is this one, if you notice, has got the terminals on the top. I've got another one, the terminals are on the side. So that kind of that kind of threw that out the window. Um, you know, not to mention the fact that these here don't have a um, forward reverse. You actually have to move your throttle that way. So the throttle control isn't as finite um, as the big guys, these guys. This one here, you've got a lot more, a lot more control over how much power is actually going out. So, what are you going to do, Ray? Well, for the moment. 
Um, I'm actually considering, and I'm actually, I've actually looked at these a little bit deeper. Um, you cannot take them apart. They've got a specific uh, screw in them. I've got, I've got the bit, but the bit that I've got isn't long enough to actually get on the um, on the back side here, on the upper one. Um, the plastic's too deep. Um, which isn't exactly a bad thing. Um, I'm actually thinking about having a, I guess for lack of a better term, a lanyard for them. Um, or some sort of a holder. I'm, I'm going to get to that eventually. Um, but either way, no matter which direction I was going to go with this, and of course a buddy of mine just happened to mention, he says, why don't you look to see if you can get something that's got more butt to it and just go ahead and build, which I had thought about doing a long time ago, even with the old layout, was building my own handheld throttle. And which doesn't sound like a, a bad idea. And the reality of it is, is with the way that those Bachmans are, considering the fact that the, uh, the, the transformer itself for the power pack is a wall board. So this makes, that's the reason why those are so light, because the transformer is actually plugged into the wall. Um, and like I said, these here, yeah, it, it, it basically just says 16 volts. So that's all it's outputting. Six, 16 volts and AC, so it's not putting out 16 volts DC. Um, so, now the thing is, I do actually have some old computer power supplies floating around. I don't know if they've got a 24 volt AC or a 24 volt DC output. That would be one way to go. Um, but I think for the time being, because I want to have some sort of walk around with this, um, I'm actually going to see if I can't find some way of rigging up these 1370s because they do have enough power behind them. They've got a nice feel to the throttle control. Um, so I think that's what I'm actually going to end up doing for the time being until I figure out what I'm going to do down the long run. Um, the other reason why it became such a problem is with the an African locomotive with lighted passenger cars. Now, there's only one train running, but underneath of Beauville, you've got a there is already one passenger train sitting down there with lighted passenger cars, and then you've got another one that's actually running with lighted passenger cars. So there's a lot of that that's taking out a lot of voltage, and that's where the problem really came from. Um, if I went ahead and hooked up those to the outer to the outer run, I didn't have any problems because there's no light of passenger cars there. And of course, now the other thing would be to go ahead and get rid of the light of passenger cars, which actually did cross my mind. Um, but even at that, there still wasn't enough rear end in those little handhelds to actually move the Atherton locomotives. They just did not have enough butt behind them. So anyway, that's where we're at. I'm going to actually go ahead and go back to the bench because there is one other thing I want to show. One. And two, I'm going to start wiring things up because no matter which way I go eventually, I want to have this thing set up to where I can do walk around. So let's go take a look and see what I'm up to. Okay, before I get into what I was actually going to work on back here, uh, David Atkins, I'm sorry this is moving. I'm trying to get it lined up here a little bit. Um, and they asked me about how I wired up my Atlas connector. Um, so this is this is the Atlas connector. These two wires here uh, on the on the left hand side come from the power pack. This first switch goes up to my test track in the back. The second or the second switch is open. The third switch actually goes over to my and this wiring goes over to my test or over to the test bench when I want to do uh, locomotive maintenance so I can actually test them before I actually put them on a track. So up here, back there, is where those red and black wires come up to the test track. And then 
down here. Over there is a terminal strip that I can hook up my test leads to to actually go ahead and hook up to a locomotive when I'm doing the lubrication, the oiling and the greasing of the uh, gears um, on the locomotives. Now, right now, that pair of uh, alligator clips is actually out at the layout because I needed them for testing. So, we'll be back. Hopefully, David, this answers your question as to how I did this. So, the reality is, is when these are in the down position, they're off. When they're in the up position, they're on, or they're selected. And right now, because I don't have anything on there, and I don't want, it, want anything to short out, I've got them all turned off. So, that's that. Hopefully, like I said, that answers your question, David. We'll be back. Okay. So, what I'm messing with here is a DPDT non-center off. These here are just selecting one or the other. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to send, or I'm actually going to wire this up to where this is feeding the track. And I think... I forgot to clip off some extra stuff and I just kicked the daggone tripod. Alright, so this end So that then goes to the blocks. This end will go to the switches. And these are going to get set up just like my, my other block switches. Except for the fact that they won't actually be, they won't actually be on a block. They'll actually be selecting which ever power pack is supposed to be feeding said blocks because one thing that's going to happen obviously if you are the northbound train when you get to when your train gets to Harrisburg the north yard then your next train out will be headed southbound and it's going to be up to the dispatcher and the uh, tower man to go ahead and make sure that you've got your power routed correctly and that will we'll, we'll have more on that later and I'm probably not on camera and I can't really see the camera at the moment so all I'm doing right now is I'm going ahead and stripping the wires And I don't know why I bothered putting the uh, <laughs> putting that uh, DPDT in there. I've got to I've got to I got to tin the wiring first. That would be helpful. So these need to be tinned before I can do anything. we'll be back okay so I got the DPDT or the yeah the DPDT's set up um, basically what it is uh, the center will go out to the track and then the two sides uh, are your uh, power feeds um, 
red black for one power pack, green white for the other one. Um, unfortunately with this wire, I don't have too many choices in color. <laughs> so, um, you just have to bear with me that, you know, this, this, this bundle here goes out to a power pack, this goes out to the other power pack, or I shouldn't say that they go out to the... It, but it'll be, yeah, this, this... The red and black go to one power pack, the green and white go to another power pack. That's how that works. Um, I forgot to trim these after I got done soldering. There we go. So the centers go out to the track. These here, you got like I said, you got green and white as one power pack, red and black as the other. What will happen is, is these two sets of wires will go to a terminal strip. This terminal strip here, and then from there, you know the basic from the way it's going to work is on one side of this it'll go to the DPDTs, the other side goes to the power packs. So that's how that's going to work. You'll see that when I get there. I'm not there yet, so it is what it is. Okay, folks, <clears throat> I do have some cleanup work to do yet, but. This is now the control board for the uh, two walk-around throttles. Um, this side would be A power pack, B power pack, A power pack, B power pack. This is the southbound run. This is the northbound run. Um, I don't have them labeled yet. <laughs> I just realized that, but I know what they are. Um, <clears throat> they come over to this terminal strip. Um, and as you can see here, this, these go to the two DPDTs, and then this side goes out to the track. And, well, it's a little rigged up, just a little bit, but, um, yeah, because of the fact that I can't go anywhere, um, unfortunately the showstopper has hit the family. So... <laughs> Yeehaw! <laughs> but at um, any rate, so what we what we've got is is this goes all the way around, and lo and behold, there's one of the one of the two walk around throttles. The other one is actually down here, and obviously, eventually, what I'm going to do, and of course, people. We're probably going to go, okay, what was the purpose of this? Well, one of the issues that I had, I'm going to try swinging this around without causing too much hate and discontentment here, because I'm just holding the, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, let's see how far away I can get myself. Um, I used the layout to kind of brace it for a second here. Um, this was a proof of concept. Um, one of the things that I found, and I kind of mentioned it on John Number Two stream Sunday night. One of the things I found originally is, and I'm sure it was also a part of this vlog, but I'm not, I haven't gone back to watch, and right now I really don't feel like it, so we're just going to roll with it. Um, I originally thought about using the little Bachman um, power packs that have the wall warts. Number one, they would be a heck of a lot lighter. Number two, they're handheld. They were, they fit perfect in your hand. The problem is, is the max voltage output is 16 volts, and they don't tell you if that's AC or DC. Um, and I've got a feeling it's more AC. Um, which is the if that's the case, the DC output is probably somewhere close to 12 which according to my meter, I think it was right around 10 to 12 volts at DC. It's not enough to run an Atherton locomotive. Um, so that got scrapped. Uh, I then went through and found out that I had other power packs, unlike these rail power 1370s, that actually did put out 18 volts, 20 volts, 17 volts DC, 16 volts DC. I'm sorry if this thing keeps rocking. I'm trying to steady it on the layout and 
in my present condition, apparently that's not a good thing. Um, so, um, I started looking into using those. The issue with those, they were a lot smaller. They were more, more handheld than what the, the 1370s are. The issue is, is the control isn't as uh, fine. Um, in other words, you know, when you look at the 1370, you've got a dial that basically goes seven eighths of the way around where it gets to 100%. Uh, with the other ones that I was using or looking into, they're using maybe three eighths uh, of the dial to actually make the to actually change the voltage or regulate the voltage, and it's just not finite enough for switching operations. Um, they would probably they they they, they they're not going to work. The 1370s, because you got a little bit more wiggle room, you can vary the speed a lot slower. Those lighter power packs or those smaller power packs, I think two of them are Auroras, the other ones are Tyco Pack 1s, they would be fine for through freights because you set them and you just move. So what was the whole purpose behind this? Well, as you all know, I'm still DC. That's the first thing. And I have no plans in the near future of going DCC. However, with the way this layout is set up, it was rather apparent that having stationary power supplies was going to be a problem. So I had, from the very get-go, or even actually when I was working on the layout over um, at my old house, I had actually started plans then to build a handheld throttle. So, and it may come, still come down to that. I may end up doing something custom eventually. This was more or less a proof of concept. Will it work? And it will work. Um, even using, I think it's 22 gauge wire to feed into the tracks and when you, from the power packs, they've got enough rear end. And with the way the bus lines and all are on here, there's plenty of power. That's not an issue. So as far as light, as far as weight goes, I've got my I've got my proof of concept. I now need to work on the development of the actual handheld throttle. Um, so that'll be next sometime, probably next year. But um, there is some other things I'm going to get into. But um, that's going to be the next video. So you all know the deal. Wait for the highball. Green tracks ahead. We'll catch y'all next time. Be safe. God bless. We'll see you.